What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the special July 13th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy News Beat. Stand up. As always, it's our weekly recap where we cover the top stories for the week. Man, it's busy weeks, Stu. Oh, it's been absolutely crazy. We've had Biden's administration shutting down more oil and picking fights, even though the Supreme Court says go off and try to be human. I don't get it. Yeah, pretty pretty interesting. It's been a long week. We appreciate everybody sticking with us. As always, the news and analysis that you heard this week is brought to you by the world's greatest website, energynewsbeat.com. Hit the description below. Links, timestamps, the articles. Check out our trading desk if you're interested in selling crude oil, jet fuel, or LNGs. We'll hook you up with the appropriate parties. But I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to the weekly recaps, too. We'll see you guys on Monday. Labor wins landslide victory in the UK snap elections. This, I, I really feel sorry for the UK folks. This was the conservatives' worst defeat in the party's 190 year history. Tory leader Rish Sunak resigned as prime minister Friday morning after his party won only 121 seats in the 650 seats out of House of Commons. I'm sorry. I've heard your anger. Michael, I, I don't want to spend much time on this. It's worth reading this article, but I feel sorry for the in, the the Brits. Their country is going to hay in a handbasket even worse than the United States. This man is a World Economic Forum fan, and he thinks that all of the green energy needs to be magnified. That's all I got to say on this. This is absolutely unbelievable what kind of a human this individual is. I think the, you know, as it rego as as this regards to energy, I think one thing that we've talked about at nauseum on this show and we've covered a few times is the fact that there's all of these, you know, you've got Shell, you've got BP, all of them are considering listing on the New York Stock Exchange and US run stock exchanges. I think this election what this means is that you're going to see that take full force now. I think by I, the end of 2025, I think you'll see both Shell and BP being listed and moving their headquarters to the United States in order to, I mean, think about this. They, I mean, they've got is, that, that profit, is, profits tax was actually implemented by the UK. Well, that's not going anywhere under this guy. No, it's being beefed up. Yep. And so not only are the Green New Deal and the energy policies and climate change being fully thrown in, he is now opening the borders and he is now saying he's not, he's canceling the closing of their borders and throwing out the illegal immigrants. So he is now totally going to bring down the UK as it relates to energy the interconnects, everything else, the natural gas. I mean, this thing is a disaster. All right. Has the extreme bear market in, in natural gas come to an end? No. In the in the in the in the latest edition, the numbers, we'll take a look at some of the most interesting figures and let's take a look. 40% rebound in Tesla shares. He's concerned about Tesla. I, I'm pretty, what is going to make it, guys? When you sit back and take a look at Tesla's rally, then you take a look at the natural gas. This this article is a little from oilprice.com, and it's got a little bit of a multi-flavor items in it. Natural gas storage plus five-year average. Storage surplus to the five-year has declined for a seventh consecutive week, falling to 528 BCF at the end of June. June, the average value of natural gas consumption from the power plants at 45.3 BCF per day at the end of June, a whopping 14% higher than the same period ago the previous year. Yeah, um, I, I think obviously as we move into summer, we're going to see prices move up a little bit. I, I mean, we'll, we'll cover where natural gas prices are sitting at now, but we've we've seen a rebound over the last six months relative to where prices should have been. I mean, that's the funny part is prices should be higher in the winter because we're drawing from storage. But as this article is pointing out, storage is drawing down. We're at the, our, our five-year average right. inventories has declined, as Stu mentioned, for seven straight weeks. So the real question is, are we going to start now seeing a reversal 
in kind of the cyclical trend of natural gas prices fall in the summer, rise during the winter. Well, they may rise now because, one, we're going to need a lot more AC being used. We and- see driving. Now, I did see a report out of one of our favorite, one of my favorite Twitter guys. I say that with a grain of salt. He's not one of my favorite Twitter followers, but Patrick DeHan, he's the gas buddy guy. Shill for the, the, the liberal energy Twitter. It doesn't matter. He's got great energy scoop. He said that he saw disappointing demand or disappointing consumption numbers over the July 4th weekend, which is generally a... A, a, a big gasoline consumption. So there's a lot of interesting noise jumping back and forth. You know, I mean, I mean, natural gas prices have fallen a little bit. We're now back down into the low twos. Again, we, we saw last week I was off for this show, but the U.S., you know, the courts pausing the LNG ban is also not necessarily bullish for U.S. natural gas prices and the fact that now there's a place where natural gas can go. And if it's going to leave the United States because of the arbitrage between what you can sell it for here and what you can sell it for overseas, it, it, it could be. I think there's a lot of trying to understand what goes on in the ga- natural gas market is impossible. Anybody that tells you they know where natural gas prices are going to go is lying to you, even if it's me. So just be wary of all that. Yes. South Dakota. Love me some South Dakota. South Dakota clashes with Minnesota on clean energy coal plant closures. As gas and electric companies transition away from fossil fuel, South Dakota officials stress reliability of resources in extreme weather. They get cold up there besides having to play polka, you know, to, you know, to try to warm up. This is really kind of interesting. A border war is between South Dakota and Minnesota on how to handle the tax policies, appropriation, and pandemic response could spill over into renewable energy in the future of coal plants. Listen to this. The Democratic Minnesota legislator in 2023 passed a, a law in 2023 requiring all electric utilities in the state to produce only carbon-free energy by 2040. Now they're just making up terms. What is Carbon free. Carbon free means absolutely zero carbon being put into the atmosphere. And how do you do that? Nuclear. Unless you're going to start, you know, going out and making nuclear. Nuclear is the only thing that can do that. Nuclear plants had to burn some fossil fuels and really. So this comes back to whole scope one, scope two, scope three. I just have carbon free. Oh, what does that even mean? Right. You know, what you have to do is plant all the farmland that you can in Minnesota and you'll be carbon net zero in Minnesota. I, I could solve this in about two and a half seconds. Excel Energy, 3.7 million electrical customers include about 100,000 South Dakotans based in Minneapolis. So that's why it is now impacting each other. It's not because one side's going to have the coal plant, have the air go by. But you know what, Michael? With over 75 volcanoes going around the world, net zero is not going to happen. Yeah, I, I love this article. We actually put the the, the full PDF that was sent by uh, the president of Xcel Energy, who's over, or no, this is to who Ryan is Long. this from? This is from the commissioners over in Minnesota to right. Xcel Energy, who I bet Christine I was in Excel. Fork, Gary Hansen and Chris Nelson. I will admit, I, back in Colorado, I was a longtime XL Energy customer. I do like them. Obviously, regulated monopoly. They're part of the Midcontinent Independent System Operator, or MISO right. grid. And they're, yeah, it's it's very interesting. You know, closing coal to spin up, it, it's going to be very interesting. Listen to this. Ms. Mismo, Mizo is going to estimate that 103 gigawatts of generation will be closed over the next 19 years. 80% of that is dispatchable. How are you going to replace 80% of your dispatchable energy? You can't. You're going to get a bunch of mice on treadmills just losing their mind. It's still not dispatchable. I mean, you're going to have to go harder. Yeah, you're going to run harder. More cheese. More cheese. ConocoPhillips sues over Biden's oil and gas drilling ban in Alaska. Michael, this is important because of the Chevron deference Supreme Court ruling. This is important. This is the fourth major anti-deep state legislation through regulatory action, and ConocoPhillips is now stepping up to it. A, I love Alaska. 
B, I love the environment. C, ConocoPhillips does a great job drilling for low cost energy and they need to go drill. Turn them loose. Congress did not authorize BLM to promulgate sweeping regulations that thwart and prevent the production of petroleum through the N. P.R.A. Conoco Phillips said, yet the rule contains numerous new provisions that elevate resource preservation over energy production and effectively turn the petroleum reserve into a de facto wilderness area, which development is outright prohibited. Here, here's the thing. Why are they doing this when they aren't saving the whales that you love to kill? I mean, you would think that the wind farms would have the same kind of regulatory actions on them. The real question is, is 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 this in light of the Chevron decision? Yes. So this so my point is, this is exactly why not having executive and, and regulatory agencies cover this stuff is critical, because if the if, if a new if a different administration was in there, this rule may or may not exist. And taking that power away from the regulatory agencies and putting it back in the proper functions, which is the Congress. democratically the democratically, I'll, I'll put that in air quotes, the democratically elected Congress and the courts is a much better system. But I vote, I think you're going to see a lot more of these type of cases now that that Chevron decision is overturned. Obviously, Alaska with 1.8 million acres of state and federal leases that ConocoPhillips could drill on, including 1 million net undeveloped acres. And there's a lot that could be developed there. The, the Alaska pipeline is, I believe it's past its retirement date that they had, had projected, and it's only about 20% full used. They could still pump a lot of oil down there, and I would rather have California buy oil from Alaska and truck it down and buy it from America and know that it's not coming from Iran or China. Sorry. Yes. All right. Next article coming around the corner. The left's $7 trillion lie. Biden far outpaces Trump in racking up the national debt. As I said, I am not a fan of debt. If you don't have the money, don't spend it. We saw a classic case of projection in Thursday's presidential debate back two weeks ago. Who is overseeing annual deficits of $2 trillion asserted as precedent? Uh, predecessor donald trump added more to the federal debt than anyone else here's where it comes in miss producer if you could bring this chart up january 2021 with the central budget office forecast june 24 and take a look at this the numbers are just staggering there's absolutely no way the congressional budget office forecast include an increase in debt in other words, the CBO now expects the debt to be $7.2 trillion higher than it had projected when Trump left office, all because of Biden's reckless expending policies. The Treasury Department figures also show debt growing much faster under Biden. We are on a horrible slippery slope. Over Trump's entire term, including the 2020 state of emergency COVID spending, the debt increased by $7.7 trillion. However, 15% of that debt total was the result of the Treasury's choice to keep additional cash on hand during the pandemic. Former Treasury Steve Munchkin, unsure how tax revenue would be collected, borrowed over $1 trillion. Biden, however, spent that reserve and then borrowed another $7 trillion on top of it. Instead of simply allowing one-time emergency COVID spending to expire, Biden and the Democratic Congress continued spending that same COVID era level, thus institutionalizing multi-trillion dollar deficits. So the Democrats and the Republicans are at fault for this horrific spending. Accounting for the cash balances, who spent more? Biden definitely spent more, and that needs to be clarified on that. What this means to energy, it it's just is the cost of capital for oil and gas companies to try to uh, bring it in is still high. This is one of the primary reasons that they're not reducing any of the, the money. Unbelievable.
I'm kind of almost at a loss for words. This story is amazing. Department of Interior shuts down millions of acres of Alaska to oil and gas and mining activity. The decision on D1, D1 lands removes the area the size of the state of Pennsylvania from source wow. development. And this was originally approved by Trump. Now, this happens after the Chevron deference Supreme Court, and we've had four cases, Michael, that have already been overturned by the overreach of the Biden administration. And the Biden administration rolls over and goes, we're not quite dead yet. We're going to make some people's lives miserable. This is nuts. This is a quote out of the article. Today's double whammy attack on Alaska's resource development opportunities makes 65 times the Biden administration has targeted our states and energy and economic future. The administration is completely kotowed to radical environmental environmentalist in order to gain favor at the ballot box. 28 million acres off limits. This is just nuts. They're not well, going to what they've also did in, in a separate decision. They also blocked a 211 mile gravel road that would go ahead to connect West Central Alaska and the mining districts and extremely rich in copper. We need that. And if they want to do an energy transition, they need the mining. They need the copper. Yep. And I'll tell you what, our great oil and gas and our mining operations up in Alaska are better than anywhere else in the world. And they care about the environment. Why do you have the native Alaskans up there loving the oil and gas industry? Why do you have everybody lining up fighting for it? Because of the good regulatory actions that they have had in the state level up there. Mm -hmm. Hats off to the state. I love I love Alaska. No, we, we love Alaska. They they specifically are citing the fact that the jobs, revenue and minerals would want help Alaska continue to fund them, but also make us less energy dependent on other nations. So we it's really a catch 22 here. Yeah, we got this big, ugly thing called China over here. We got to go through. So let's go to the next one before I get an aneurysm. All right.